we step back and consider the undeniable contrast of highways set against the remaining natural areas, how they can transform a once dark and calm area alive with these ancestral calls of the wild into this frenzied scene of oncoming traffic and high octane fumes and high decimal noise, we see a pretty onerous picture, far from uh, that benign, glossed over two-dimensional pictures of highways we are often sold. To this point, over the last few centuries, hundreds of studies in a variety of terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems have demonstrated repeatedly that the most pervasive threats to what remains as natural resources and biological diversity are aggravated by roads. When proposed roadways encroach into wetland preserved habitats, these causative agents take on increasing concerns particularly here in South Florida, where our unprecedented aggravated assault on wetlands over the last 50 years has contributed to the demise of over 2 million acres of the original Greater Everglades ecosystem, all for the sake of accommodating growth. Admittedly, a good portion of this was done out of ignorance of the intricate relationship wetlands to water resources. Lacking the science to convince us of this, we quite literally have been cutting off our lifeline as we have exploited the wetlands. That was then. Now we have no more excuses. Science has proven these connections. The short of it is, Wetlands, big or small, are essential to our continued prosperity, growth, and quality of life, if not our very survival. Without them, there is no recharge to our aquifers to offset our increasing demand for the liquid they store from rainfall. Wetlands are our most important piece of infrastructure and our most vulnerable natural assets at the same time. No other natural resource is more precious than usable fresh water. None is shrinking faster as we multiply our demands on it. While to this day, we still persist in draining it and paving over it further, acre by acre, mile by linear mile, outrunning any notion of sustainability at every decisive intersection given to us. What happened? Poor planning? Bad design? Perhaps complacency? Whatever the causative reason, we are all living on borrowed topographical wetlands. Almost like a satirical play, as we whittled away at our wetland inheritance, we now have begun to step back and begin to draw some disturbing conclusions. Water, or more precisely wetlands, are the one true limiting factor to our continuing story of South Florida as a desirable place to live. The irony of it all is that there is now only X amount of wetlands, X amount of recharge, X amount of rainfall, equaling X amount of water. There is only so much to go around and for all intents and purposes, we must conserve what's left. In a portion of the state that is now experiencing its fourth unprecedented drought in one decade, scarcity is only around the next hairpin turn. West Palm Beach has a long time-tested relationship 
with usable surface water supply, more specifically wetlands. To this day, it still relies on the wetlands of Grassy Waters Preserve to collect and store rainfall for its freshwater supply that is served up amply, fresh, each day at your tap. In the most modern sense, these wetlands are our commons. 27 square miles of wetlands making up nearly half the boundary lands of West Palm Beach, held in trust for now and for future generations to come. For over a half a century, the health of these commons and the ancestral wetland ecosystems contained within have been managed by the city. Through time, they have been guarded and protected against all elements inside and out that might minimize their value or compromise the endearing attributes they engender. Nothing and no one is exempt from this examination. A knowledgeable and aware citizenry has always been essential to this charge throughout the history of West Palm Beach which brings us to this moment in historical time. I am here to tell you we have at our boundaries forces that would compromise these ancestral wetlands and their future values. They come in the form of roads, or more precisely highways, four lanes, six lanes, cloaked in the guise of progress and safety, but tethered in truth to more unbridled growth for growth's sake. They will test our resolve as citizens, as guardians, as decision makers to draw the line on what others may feel either righteous or right. To the south, along the enclaves of Bay Winds, Riverwalk, and Andros Isles, Roebuck Roadway Extension will sever along a four-mile stretch wetlands now serving our water supply needs. In its path, laying waste old-growth cypress domes and sensitive wet prairies that is to this very day the keepers of species of risk of extinction in our own lifetime. Such is the precarious, perched position of the endangered Everglades snail kite, whose population are now so few that the subtraction of just a few breeding pairs can well determine its decline. Closer still is the State Road 7 extension, whose provisional right-of-way giveaway predates the creation of the Endangered Species Act of 1973, which placed the snail kite under its protective covenant from its very inception. This act is explicit. Once listed, a species and its population may not be brought to further harm, nor may any federal agency authorize, fund, or carry out any action or judgment that is likely to jeopardize its continued existence. Here, harm has been broadly defined by the Act to include the destruction of habitat. Subjective, maybe, but when validated nesting sites are already occurring within the wetlands adjacent to the proposed State Road 7 roadway, the predictive habits of this species has already been determined and the inclusion of harm into the consequences has already entered the scene of the crime before the crime has occurred. In essence, the four plus mile stretch of State Road 7 as it threads the needle between Grassy Waters Preserve and Ibis on its way to North Lake Boulevard will have an array of long-term effects. 
Several levels of inquiry come into play in predicting outcomes of roadways across time and space. The simplest of these come in the form of direct punitive impacts associated with the actual permanent habitat destruction. Whereas direct effects were linear projectiles in space and time, indirect effects in the second level of inquiry are more akin to a shotgun blast wherein indiscriminate, sometimes unpredictable collateral damage occurs peripherally and well into the inner interior portions of the preserve. Cumulative impacts, the most far-reaching level of inquiry, is also the most difficult to quantify directly but are in reality the most insidious, longest lasting, and least examined. Indeed, almost all research on road problems has looked at only one factor or one road's effect within the larger scheme of things at a time. There will be consequences, some obvious, some hidden, some silent. It is paramount that you participate in this ongoing inquiry. We can come together collectively, not by some top-down edict, to decide what is appropriate and right. All that is necessary is that instead of stepping back now, that you step up and step forward and be counted. There are risks. Participate. That is what democracy is all about. The risks are incalculable, but they can be put into predictive terms. At risk is the chance happening of a catastrophic contamination of our water supply, up the probability of not if, but when something tragic will happen. At risk is the chance of us as a city losing a vital portion of its historical heritage and value of a preserve that has been set aside for all future generations. At risk is the deterioration of wetlands that ultimately lead us further toward endangerment of the Everglades snail kite. No, this is not the time for you or any of us to remain silent on these roadway issues. They affect all of us. They are not exclusive to these western communities, but rather will gnaw away at what we as a city stand for and need to stand up for and fight against this intrusion. Please help us protect grassy waters. There is more at risk than you can even fathom.